Today, I would like to explain to you how monks greet each other, how we greet each other when we meet each other, how the junior monk pays respect to the senior monk. In the Sri Lankan tradition, we have a, a Pali formula that we say. It's like an exchange of Pali lines. I, he says something, I say something, he says something, I say something. And I want to explain to you what this is all about. It's a very, it's a very nice way that we, we greet each other. In some other Buddhist countries, we, we say that uh, we just bow down, that's it, three times. But uh, in some other countries, even though we only bow down three times, they also know the, the Sri Lankan way of doing because they have Sri Lankan visitors. So for instance, at Pa'ak, the senior meditation teachers know this Pali formula, how to answer, how to respond. Even Pa'ak Sairoji as well. In Malaysia also, I think they, they do. Sairao uh, Umangala, uh, he, he also, I think they, they do this at their, at their monastery. So, let's get into the, the way we say hello and goodbye. So I have, I have here Venerable Upali. He's one of my friends. I've asked him to come to help and demonstrate how monks greet each other when we meet each other. So he is junior to me, and uh, he will pay respect to me and uh, tell me about his merits, and I will tell him about my merits, uh, generally speaking, and we, we, we rejoice in our merits. And then afterwards, uh, we will apologize to each other. Even though we haven't really done anything wrong to each other, uh, this is just a customary in case there's something that's done wrong. So now we will do the, the demonstration. Oka Savanda Mibhanti Supatitva Maya Katang Punyan Savina Anamoditabha Sadu Anamodami Savina Katang Punyan Maihanda Tabbam Sadu Anamoditabham Sadhu Sadhu Anamodami Oka Sadwara Tene Katan Sabang Achiam Kamatami Bhante Kamami Kmitabam Sadu Oka Sakamam Supatitwa Nidukitwa Nirogetwa Supatitwa So first they say Oka Sawanda Mi Bhante and then they bow down. And I'll say, Suki ho tu, Nibbana sapacheo ho tu. That means, uh, may you be happy, may this be a cause for you to get uh, a Nibbana. Maya katam punyam samina namoditabam. So this is what the junior monk will say. He say, may the venerable sir, may he rejoice in the merit that I have made. And I'll say, sadhu sadhu anamodami. So I will say, uh, sadhu sadhu, that means uh, well said. Uh, well done, well done. I rejoice in your merit. And then he'll say, Samina katampunyam my And it says, May the Venerable Sir, may he share with the merit that he has made and rejoice in it, so that he can rejoice in it. And I'll say, Sadhu anamoditabam. You should rejoice in my merit. And he says, Sadhu, sadhu anamodami. And then he'll continue. O kasa dwaratanene katam sabbam machayam kamatame bhante. So he's saying, Venerable Sir, if there are any deeds that I have done in body, speech, or mind, the three doors, may, the, may bhante forgive me. And I say, the senior monk will say, kamami kamita bam. He say, I forgive you, and you should also forgive me. It's implied through the three doors, the body, the speech, and the mind. So I say, kamami kamita bam, and then he'll respond, sadhu, okasa kamami bante. So that means, uh, yes, it is good, and I, I also forgive you bante for anything you have done wrong, the three doors, body, speech, and mind. And then he'll bow down three times, and as he's bowing down three times in Theravada, we always do like this. 
ase suki hotu, nibbana sapacheo hotu, or I'll say some other words, uh, wishing him uh, to be happy, uh, free from suffering, etc. There are three purposes for this greeting. We have paying respect, we have sharing merit and reflecting on, on both each other's merits. And the, the third part is forgiveness. Both parties forgiving each other. Not like we have done anything wrong to each other, but just in case. And sometimes we have done something wrong. So I will explain these uh, things in, in detail. So when the first part, he says, O Kasa Wanda Mi Bhante. So I have a, a blog post, and I, call, uh, I talk about uh, what, uh, what the ordination means. I talk about what it is to be senior in the order of monks. And, and that the religious order, we call it the religious order, actually. We call it the religious order, ordination. Ordo is the Latin word, O-R-D-O, from which ordination comes from. It's when you enter the, the order, the, we could say the pecking order, but uh, we say when you, when, you, when you get ordained, that's when you start accounting uh, your place in the religious order, the religious order. You, can, you, you won't be able to hear this word in the same way after I've explained it to you. And we have many uh, different things that we do for senior monks and junior monks. The first thing is in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, the Buddha, he said that the senior monk should address the junior monk as Avuso. And the junior monk should address the senior monk as Bhante. Actually, my, my passport name is Bhante Bhikkhu Subhuti. My first name is Bhante. It makes everything easier. You should not call the senior monk by their, actually Pali, by their actual Pali name. You should not call a monk, uh, like my name is Bhante Subhuti. My Pali word is Subhuti. But you should not call me that. But a senior monk can call me Subhuti, like Paoksaito pa Ji, he would call me Subhuti. Or other senior monks would call me Subhuti. It's like calling someone by their last name. That's why it is my last name. You know, like a, like a drill sergeant might call one of the lower uh, trainees uh, by his last name. In the same way, it's a little bit like that. So, Bhante Bhikkhu Suputi is my, is my passport name. I changed my name this way. And it works out very nicely. It's actually most polite, actually, to call me just Bhante without the Suputi. But if there are... If there are other monks, other monks in the room, you would want to say Bande Sabuti, so, so that we both don't turn our, our heads, you know, when you say Bante, because we're all, all monks are Bante, actually. All monks are Bante. The seniority is uh, another thing where how we seat, how we sit, how we sit down, where we sit. The junior monks sit last on the line, and the senior monks uh, sit closer to the front, the Buddha being the, the highest seat and the best seat. And also how we, how we get our food. The senior monks, they, they get their food first. And the, the junior monks will, will go like this when they see a senior monk and they bow down. The, the senior monk does not bow down to the junior monk. This, but the monk does not bow down to the lay people. So for a lay person, all, all monks are senior. But usually the lay people, they, when they're paying respect to the monks, they either know or they, or they ask who is the most senior monk. When we go Pindabhata, I would go first, and the, the junior monk would go behind me. And the lay people would know that uh, they would give me the food first and then the other monk second. This is a part of being a senior, part of being a monk for a long time. 
a lot of monks disrobe. Our organization actually hasn't grown in, uh, in 18 years. It hasn't really grown at all. Yet they're ordaining 50, 50, 80, maybe even over 100 monks each year. There's only like a thousand monks in our organization that we know of. We're not keeping the best records, but... So a lot of monks disrobe. And so that's why we, we have a respect for the monks who stay in robes. And we don't get a chance, as we become more and more senior, we don't get a chance to pay respect to other monks. As they say, it's lonely on top. And we really... We really enjoy paying respect. When there's a senior monk, we, we, we jump at the opportunity to pay respect. I remember when I was in Hawaii, I said this. Maybe I said this before, that when, there was, when I was visiting another temple in Hawaii, another monastery, I came across another senior monk. At that time, I was, I was completely alone. For maybe like a year and a half, I was completely alone. The only monk that I'd, I was the only monk on the island. And I went to the main island, Honolulu, Oahu, Oahu Island. And there was a senior monk. And his vinya was, we could say, very relaxed. But I paid respect to him with full honor, with full heart, because it was a, an opportunity to pay respect to a senior monk. It's very important to have that in your heart, to want to pay respect. So in the, in the time of making this video, I'm working on my 18th wasa, my 18th rainy season. If I had not reordained, this would be, I'd be working on my 24th rainy season. I ordained February 7th, in 2001. In this next round, I ordained June 18th, 2007. When we meet people, when we meet other monks, we, we usually we ask them, how many wasa are they? And sometimes, you know, they say, oh, I ordained uh, this year. And then, oh, I'm this year too. And then we say, well, what month? And then, he might say, uh, such and such month. And then we might be the same month. And then we say, well, what day of that month? And then he'll say the day. And even we might have some people, some monks, who are ordain the same day. And then we say, what hour? What hour did you ordain? The senior monk at, at the International Institute of Theravada, Bhante Devananda, he's the, the abbot the leader of the place. He's maybe three, four hours senior to me. We ordained the same day. I was in a different group. Maybe three hours, four hours later. I think it was three hours. And here I am. I, I pay respect to him. When I first met him, when I first met him, he, he, had, he had ten wasa and then he dropped to a salmonera. I was senior to him. And this is how we, we do things. No matter what you do, when you give up, you give up. And when you collect the wasa, you collect the wasa and other monks. They respect you this way. And it's a very beautiful thing. It's a very beautiful thing that we do. So the first thing we do is we pay respect. We recognize who is senior, we recognize who is junior, and they, they give you the, the better seat, they give you the better food, and they also bow down to you. And then they, they do this, uh, the next part, which is the rejoicing. This, the first part is paying respect, the second part is rejoicing, rejoicing the merits. Mayakatam punyam samina anamoditabbam. And I say, sadhu sadhu anamodami. Samina katam punyam mai hamdatabbam. Sadhu sadhu anamoditabbam. Sadhu sadhu anamodami. So this part is uh, saying uh, that uh, the junior monk says, I have done many good things. 
please rejoice. You should rejoice in what I have done. And then quickly I should think about uh, the merit he's made. Simply being a monk that day was good enough. He didn't renounce. It's very rare to be a monk. But I can think of other things, like this one monk that I, I asked to come and give a, an example of how we pay respect. He was making merit just by doing that and also volunteering for a video. But not only that, he made me a belt and it's a very nice uh, thing that he did. I had a belt that was too old. It was very old and coming apart in a pocket that had holes in it. My belt was maybe more than, uh, I think, uh, more than 10 years, maybe 12 years old. My pocket maybe four or five years old, I can't remember. And, and he, had, uh, he offered to replace this for me. I asked him if he would do this. I need someone who can sew, and he, he spent a few hours, a couple hours, sewing it for me. Whenever I need help, he's there to help me. He's a very good monk, and I can reflect on that. And I can say, sadhu, sadhu, anamodami, I, I rejoice in your good merits. And then he says, he's reflecting on my merits, he says, samina katam punyam maiham databam, saying that Bhante has made many merits, and you should have me rejoice in your merits. And so then I say, sadhu anamodita bam. So I'm saying, okay, you should, that's good, you should rejoice in my, my merits that I have made. And then he'll say, sadhu, sadhu anamodami. So that's the rejoicing section of how we greet each other. You know, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. And we also have to do Namo Tassa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arato Samma Sambhutase. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arato Samma Sambhutase. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arato Samma Sambhutase. Bunyanche Puriso Karira Karira Nam Bunam Bunam. Tammi Chandam Karirate. Sukho punyasa ucceo. Should a person do good, let him do it again and again. Let him find pleasure there, for being blissful is the accumulation of doing good. I've said this before, but as the verse says, let him do good again and again. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, we can say the same verses over and over again. Actually, if we, if we limit how many verses we say, then you can absorb it better. But we can say these verses again and again. Let him do it again and again and let him find pleasure in it. So when we, when we rejoice in what we're doing, it's not like a... It's not like a conceited thing. It's not like I'm, I'm the one who did this uh, wonderful thing. It's, it's really, um, it's different than, than that. Of course, it can arise. The conceit can arise. But what we want to do is we want to, we're happy in what we have done. We're happy in the merit that we have made. And we want other people to be happy as well, for them to see what we have done that is good and to rejoice in that and to become happy in that. We call that mudita, to be happy in other people's success. And when one makes merit, this is success. This is, uh, we're happy that someone did a great thing. Sometimes we hear about some incredible donations that someone made. And we think, oh, that's just so wonderful. It's so wonderful. 
think someone gave a billion dollars to a, a medical school in New York. So it would guarantee that all students could go to this medical school for free. It's something to rejoice in. But anything we do as monks, we, we get to make good merit all the time. It's so easy to, to make merit as monks. And it's always good to, to share, to share that what we have done. We see, we see names on people's kutis. The donors of the kutis, usually like $10,000, $15,000, $20,000, depending on which country. <laughs> you can't build anything like that in America for that cheap. But we see the name on the kuti. We see the name for the breakfast donor. We see the name for the lunch donor, especially at Pa'ak. We see this. Who is the donor of the food? We have a signboard that announces who, who has done the donation of food. And I make a point to, to look at that and become happy, especially if I know the person who's done that. And so I, I've, maybe I'll make a video about some projects that I've done over the years, some major projects that I've done. And I'm working on my 24th rainy season, total as a monk. But officially, as I said before, I'm working on my 18th wasa, my 18th rainy season. Soon it will be finished. And furthermore, since 2001, February 7th, 2001, I've never touched money. Never touched money. I haven't used money. 23 full years. And if you're a new monk who is ordained just even today, that is something to rejoice in. Or if you're one who follows the five precepts, it is something to rejoice in because it's rare. There's always to re something to rejoice in others. There's always something to rejoice. Remember that and don't forget it. The last part is forgiveness. There are three parts. The first part is paying respect. The second part is rejoicing to reflect on each other's merits that one has made. And the last part is to forgive each other for peace of mind, for communal harmony. Okasa dvaratinene kadam sabbam macheyam kamatame bande kamami kamitabam sadhu okasa kamami bande So, saying, please, uh, may I have the opportunity to ask for forgiveness for anything I've done wrong through body, speech, or mind. If, if I've done anything wrong in these three doors, please forgive me. That's what the junior monk would say to the senior monk. And the senior monk would say, kamami kamita bam. So that means... I forgive you, and also you should forgive me for anything I have done. And it's implied through the three, through the three doors. And then the junior monk would say, Sadhu okasa kamami bante, I forgive you. It's very good for communal harmony. It's recognition that we might have bad thoughts Usually we have thoughts. We might have judgment thoughts. We might unconsciously think something. We might unconsciously even say something or even do something that is wrong. Even if we haven't done anything wrong, we still apologize. We still do that for communal harmony. It's very important to, to have harmony in the community of monks. And so we... We, we follow this uh, formula. And the senior monk, he has to forgive. He also has to forgive. 
the junior monk also has to forgive. As monks, we can't hold grudges. <laughs> Sometimes it would be nice if we could hold the grudge, but as monks, we can't hold grudges, actually. We have to, we have to forgive. We have to let things go. Because that's the, the monk nature. Sometimes if we don't, if we don't like each other, we, we, we tell each other, okay, let's, let's just keep everything business and harmonious. But uh, we don't uh, want to get too close to each other. And we set our boundaries. Uh, usually, hopefully, that's the worst it gets. There's a thing called Ho'oponopono. This is uh, like a mantra that uh, is practiced in Hawaii. You can go on YouTube and you can see many, many things. I'll leave a, a spelling for it, uh, put it up on the screen for you, so you can try to, try to find it. It's Ho'oponopono. And it's a, it's a way that if, if you have a disharmony with someone, that you can recite some phrases. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I thank you. I love you. And again, you repeat, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I thank you. I love you. And again, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I thank you. I love you. They have some videos on YouTube. You can search for them. And they have like maybe 108, 108 uh, repetitions. They have uh, some type of New Age music in the background and some lady with a New Age voice and she's, she's saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me, like this. I thank you, I love you. And if you have a problem with someone, you don't say it to that person in front of them. You say it, you say it, by, by yourself. And when you, when you really mean that, maybe some magic can happen. They can see it in your, in your persona, and then later things just patch up. Not always, but a lot of people speak about this. And if something doesn't actually get patched up, the other person doesn't contact you or doesn't make peace with you, you can still internally with yourself be okay because you've gone through these phrases. It's a very nice. So we have this apologies. We ask for forgiveness. And that's the third part. So the first part is Paying respect, okasa wandami bante, let me pay respect to you. The second part is mayakatam punyam saminan moditabam. The junior monk says he's done some, some great things, uh, some good things that should be rejoiced in. And the elder says, sadhu sadhu anamodami, I rejoice in your merit. And saminakatam punyam mayam databam. The junior monk is saying the senior monk has done some great merit and I should re he, should, he, should, he should give me the opportunity to rejoice in that merit. And so uh, the senior monk says, yes, that's good. Sadhu, sadhu anamodita bam, you should rejoice in my merit. And the junior monk says, sadhu, sadhu anamodami, he rejoices in it. He says, that's good, I rejoice in your merit. It's, if I've done anything wrong, may the senior monk, may he forgive me for anything I've done in the three doors, in body, speech, or mind. And the senior monk says, I forgive you, and you should also forgive me for anything I've done in the three doors. And he says, Sadhu Okasa Kama Mibante. And he'll bow down three times. And the senior monk will say, Suki Hotu Nibbana Sapache Hotu. May, you, may this be a cause for you to get uh, Nibbana and be happy. So three times, uh, three parts. 
there are three parts that we have the paying respect to the other, we have the sharing the merit, and forgiveness. It's a very nice, very nice way to do that. You know, if you're a meditation teacher, you're saying this maybe 20 times, 30 times per day. You're going through this. Every junior monk will, will want to greet you in this way. You might think it gets tiring, but it's, it's okay. It's not so bad. It's actually nice to reflect in this way. Should a person do good, let him do it again and again. Let him find pleasure there for being blissful is the accumulation of good. This is the Dhammapada stanza. Punyanche puriso karira karira nam punam punam dhammi chandam karira te suko punyasucheo So, should a person do good, let him do it again and again. Let him find pleasure there, for being blissful is the accumulation of doing good. So may you know the way the monks greet each other. They do this in Sri Lanka, but they also do this in some other places, like in Malaysia and also the Pa'ak monasteries where they have the Sri Lankan monks. If you're a lay person, you can also do this to the monks. It's very nice. You can learn this. And you can, you can say this to the monk. It's a very, very good, proper way, especially with the Sri Lankan monks. And may you feel peaceful afterwards in reflecting in your morality and reflecting on the harmony, being forgiven if you feel like you need to have anything done. And may this give you a calm mind. And with this calm mind, may you see the mind and matter and its causes as impermanent suffering and non-self. And may you reach Nibbana safely and quickly. So, there's one more thing. One more thing that I, I want to share. There's a one monk who's here. His name is uh, Venerable Dhamma Nisanti. His mother recently died. I hope I get this name right. Her name is Heti Arachige Hemavati. So, Although it's his mother, we could say that it's everyone's mother because everyone is related. If we think about the samsara in infinite mathematics, and so we share merit. Idamo nyati nango tu sukita hontu nyateo. Idamo nyati nango tu sukita hontu nyateo. Idamo nyati nango tu sukita hontu nyateo. This is a standard way of sharing merit. The Dhamma talk is high merit. And so I hope that you can benefit from this talk. Maybe it's a little long. <laughs> They're always long. <laughs> so I hope that you can benefit from this talk. And make merit yourself and rejoice in the good that other people have done so that you may reach Nibbana safely and quickly. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.